Hi knitters, uh, welcome back to this week's episode of Aro Knits and Pearls. I am Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. As always, you can find my Ravelry, Ko-Fi, Instagram, Patreon in the link description down below, as well as links to any dyer, makers, designers uh, that I talk about in today's episode. And um, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I feel like there's so many new people and I'm so used to just addressing you guys like that you've been with me from the beginning, but obviously that's not true anymore. Um, this has gotten a lot bigger than I expected, so I'm gonna try and uh, go back and reference some things first. For people who have not test knit before and are interested in learning more about test knits, I highly, highly recommend watching my episode 5. Um, the image quality probably isn't as good as now. I think I was still trying to use my laptop, which was just inferior in terms of image quality. But episode five is very informative for test knitting specifically and my approach to test knitting and how you can start doing it if that's something you want to do. So episode five, I highly recommend it for test knits. Um, second follow-up, I did want to address my uh, boundaries mini rants that I went on last episode. I just want to say everybody's been, like, at least in the comments and in my messages, everybody's been super supportive of my need to enforce boundaries. And so I really want to thank you guys. I was really nervous about how it would be received, but people have been really supportive. Um, I've still gotten some messages. Um, and it's not, it's not... I love when people like respond to my stories and just like say hi and hope that, you know, like quick little conversations like that, I love. Um, and I do my stories so that you guys can see it and respond and whatever. Like, I love those interactions, I really do. Um, please don't ever feel like you're going to bother me just by sending like a heart eyes emoji to a story about yarn or something. I love those. It's when um, people message me to ask what yarn I what yarn they should buy and oh you use a lot of Murray mohair but I find it itchy can I use Surrey and it's like I don't know you I'm not your dermatologist I'm not a personal shopper like yarn suggestions I include everything that I talk about in the description below um, I have patterns and now I have two yearly roundups where I talk about like almost 30 patterns each episode um, of those roundups so like I feel like I'm pretty good about addressing which patterns are beginner friendly and which are not. And so I'm not a personal shopper. Please don't be in my DMs asking me to do that for you. Um, but inspired by that, I am going to introduce a new perk to my Patreon. Um, for people who are the Pearl Girls or guys and Skiing Queens or Kings, which is like the $10 tier, the $25 tier, I am going to include a uh, personal shopping option for them. So it'll be like for $10 people, they'll get a 10 minute personal shopping session and for 25 and up, 25, there's no up. <laughs> for 25, they'll get like a 15 minute and they can use that once a month. Um, but that's gonna be for my Patreons. If you guys can't support me on Patreon, that's fine. That's what these videos are for. Like you'll still have me in some form or fashion. Um, yeah, so that's just like back of house stuff, I guess, that I wanted to catch you guys up on. Um, another thing that I wanted to share, I realized after the new year it started so hectically for me um, that I didn't share um, my goal. I do have a goal. So if I was crazy, um, I would say my goal would be 35 sweaters, um, including tees and tank tops. I include those. So 35 garments uh, this year. I'm not sure if I'm ready to commit to that fully. I'm hopeful, but professionally there are some things going on that may make it more difficult for me to knit as much as I do, as quickly as I am used to doing. So I'm not sure about that, but I can say definitively my goal for the new year, for 2022, is to get through 150 skeins of yarn in my stash. Only stash 150. Um, I'm not trying to prohibit myself from buying new yarn because I learned last year that um, trying to cut something cold turkey, especially something as um, pervasive in my life as yarn, like new yarn, it, it really wasn't um, sustainable in the long term. <laughs> Would you guys, if you have been around for a while, you know, you know. Um, so I'm mainly focusing on using and appreciating what I have. And I have to say, like, I have planned out my test knits through the end of February. And 
so long as I finish these things and stay on schedule um, through the end of February only, I will have used 35 skeins of stash. So 35 out of 150 for like the first month, first two months of the year. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Um, and um, skeins of yarn, I am counting like 50 grams of mohair, you know, these guys just as one. Um, and obviously sock, fingering, DK, worsted, whatever have you, they usually come in 100 grams. I'm just counting them as one. Um, if they're 25 balls, 25 gram mohair balls, I will count two as one. Um, that's just some back of house stuff. But for you guys, you don't need to see my spreadsheet. I might actually make it shareable just for funsies uh, later on as the year progresses, assuming I stay on top of this. But for now, it's really nice to see a spreadsheet where I keep track of the yarn I'm using and see that on schedule, I'm supposed to use a pretty sizable stash. Um, yeah, so it's pretty exciting for me to see um, all this beautiful yarn that I have being used up. And I hope you guys are excited to see that progress throughout the year. Um, knits in progress. Uh, so I have finished my Pavlova and I finished it just a day past the deadline. But funny enough, um, so this is the thing about testing, I have to tell you guys. With testing, the release date, it's not up to me as a tester. Um, and it's not always up to the designer. A lot of times designers will partner with dyers. A lot of times uh, designers will partner with publishing companies. So they have to, you know, delay things as things happen. And um, the designer for this amazing pattern, Pavlova, which I love, you guys, it's, it's everything I wanted. It's so fluffy, it's amazing, I love it, it's gorgeous. Um, there's a lot of positive ease, um, so I do recommend sizing down considerably than what you normally would, but I'll get into that in a second. But I will say, it is delayed. I don't know when it will be released. I don't. Um, so as soon as I hear something, you guys will hear something, but for right now, we're all in the same boat, including the designer, which is, we don't know when. Um, and that's because Xing Fiber, um, Q-I-N-G, Xing Fiber, uh, they partnered with the designer on this very specific base, their uh, brush surrey base, and they want to delay it until they get their next restock, and they don't know when that will be, because actually surrey is kind of hard to get these days. Um, so just for right now, we're all waiting, you guys, okay? So I can't control it. I'll let you guys know. I'm not, you know, hiding it from you. I don't know either. Um, and it, it's really... It's not, it's no one's fault. It's no one's fault, but it is kind of disappointing for me because I worked really hard to meet that deadline. And I know I was like 12 hours late on the deadline, but like, it was pretty substantial how quick I got it done. And um, I have a great finished object photo, a great finished object photo. And I obviously don't want to share it yet until the release date. So it's just a little bit like, ah, uh, but again, it's no one's fault. No one knew it was going to happen. Um, but again, I always try to summarize the yarn and I, I apologize for you guys who paid attention in the past few episodes and remember, but this is Blue Sky Fibers Brush Surrey and the contrast color, the little pink and purple peaks you see through there. It is Wandering Flock Mohair held triple. I actually could have held it quadruple with the amount of yarn I had and still had plenty. I have a lot of mohair left. So if you are planning on doing it the way I did it with mohair held triple, Two skeins will be plenty. Um, I knit the size two, which gives me like almost 10 inches of positive ease. It's quite, it's quite a loose fitting garment. I kind of wish I had knit the size one and I never ever knit the size one. Like I'm, I'm a small person in terms of like relative average, but like I do have a bust and I've never knit a size one in my life. Um, so, when the pattern comes out, you'll see that it's actually written for like 14 inches of ease. That is a lot, you guys, that's a lot. Um, but again, you guys can't see it yet because the pattern isn't out. So once you see the specs, like please do take some time and think about how you want it to fit. I do wish I had knit a size smaller so that it would fit a little bit more like how I like my sweaters to fit, which is oversized, but still uh, flatters my shape. Um, but that's just a personal preference. Some people really like the super oversized look and that's totally fine. But um, the brush story really, I steam blocked this one instead of wet block because I was trying to get finished object photos on time. 
Um, and I really like the way that the steam responded or the brush sorry responded to the steam. It, it opened up quite a bit so you can actually see the color work detail or not color work, the, the stranded detail. Because like I said, you don't actually alternate colors in a single row, which I think is the classical definition of color work. It's just peeking through, um, through very intelligently thought out uh, texture pattern. I really love this pattern. I It's so good to wear. And a lot of people have asked me recently, like, can I wear Surrey if I don't like mohair? Can I, like, is there a mohair you would recommend for people with sensitive skin? I can't recommend that because it's all so subjective because I don't find mohair itchy. So obviously my judgment is not gonna suit yours if you are already sensitive to the touch of mohair, which I don't find itchy, you know? like. I don't know what's going to work for you guys so i really do recommend going to a local yarn store and just touching the options they have and if you don't live near a local yarn store i i don't know what to tell you i because i really just don't feel comfortable telling you oh yeah this will work and having you invest that kind of money in it and expectation and then not being able to use it so that's the position i'm in it's not because i don't want to help you guys it's because i don't want you to rely on something i say when it's based on my subjective experience because I can use even lower quality mohair and be totally happy and comfortable. And I know that's not the majority of people. So that's why I shy away from those questions just to make that clear. It's not because I'm trying to be difficult. It's because I can't tell you what to do and I don't want to tell you what to do. Um, but yeah, so that was Pavlova and I will wear it in an episode. I really wanted to wear it to today's episode, but I thought that wouldn't be right when I don't know when the pattern will be out. So when the pattern is out, I will wear it in an episode. So uh, stay tuned for that eventually. Okay, then another whip. I'm almost done with this and I'm so excited because I really, really want to get finished object photos tomorrow. So this is the Purpuria, you guys remember, by uh, Tetis Knitwear. And again, I will link everybody. Um, since the pattern isn't out itself, I usually link to the designer's website or um, just Instagram profile if they don't have a website, but I will link her since the pattern is not out yet. Um, but she's an incredible designer. She's so adorable. Um, and I love this. I love this design. I'm still double guessing myself on the neck. I might fold it down still. I haven't fully committed yet um, right now because it is a split hem in a very creative way. I only have the back done so far, um, but what it works, how it works is it starts with teeny cables and increases both in terms of uh, length of the cable portions and also width of the cable portion. So you can see there, and it's obviously gonna stretch out quite a bit in blocking. Um, if you guys forgot, this is the Wandering Flock in the colorway black jeans. And I love this color. There's a lot of depth to the gray and there's some neutral spots as well. I just think very like slightly variegated tonals are really lovely to me because they add a touch of uniqueness without it becoming too busy. Because if it was a really variegated colorway, you obviously would lose the effect of the cable. So I'm really glad that you can still see the beautiful cabling effect that I put a lot of effort into making. Um, so this is how far I am on the front. Um, I just have a little bit more to go, so I'm confident that I can finish it today if I really focus on this. Um, the split hem detail is actually quite lovely because it incorporates the cable itself. I don't know if you can see that very well right now if I'm hiding it with my hands. So it's like this, under the arm, it's this big stockinette section that cables itself, and it'll be quite lovely the way it falls. And I'll show you guys once it's all done, of course, but I, I do love this. Um, I have admired uh, Tetis designs so for so long, and I just got lucky that I also saw another one of her test calls. It's called the Nivalis Pullover, and um, that it's color work, but it incorporates the way it does color work is it does slip stitches, so it looks like it's embroidered. It's it's a texture really, and I was lucky enough that I had some stash yarn because you know you guys know now I'm trying to get through some stash. And I have four skeins of this colorway from Hypothesis Yarns. And it's this gorgeous ice blue, and I'm going to contrast it with this colorway, which is actually 
a Woolberry Fiber Company colorway. So Hypothesis Yarns, if you guys remember, she's Canadian. She's not dying as much these days. Um, she's pretty much stepped away from it for a while, but the colorway is Regal and it's inspired by Wes Anderson. And I love Wes Anderson movies, or films rather, if you're pretentious like me. <laughs> yeah, so it's a gorgeous ice blue, um, but like a ice slate blue, it's not, uh, it's not what I would think of as like a periwinkle. It's just a, a soft one, almost a neutral blue, if that makes sense. Um, and then this colorway, I lost the little label thing, but I know it's Woolberry Fiber Company and I know it was from her 2020 Christmas um, Sunday Advent set. So her Sunday Advents, so, um, if you guys haven't heard of Sunday Advents, it's you get a skein of yarn and instead of just one mini skein for every day for the you know, 20, 25 days of the winter holiday for traditional advents. Um, instead of doing it that way, what she did was you get one full skein a week for every Sunday in December. And um, this was one of them. I don't remember the colorway again. I'm super sorry. I have to track it down. Um, but it's really lovely and I think it goes so well with this ice blue. And um, the contrast color is going to be held double. So it adds a plumpness to the slip stitches and color work. So I'm really excited to show you guys more as it works up. I was just so happy that I had something in stash that was suitable. Um, Cause like I said, I'm trying to get through it. I know you guys give me, I know some of you give me some flack about my stash. I know, but I do want to say, I have friends with much, much bigger stashes. Um, and it's just that I wear mine proudly that you guys know about it. Some of my friends, um, <laughs> some of my friends, I won't name them, but you know who you are. They're stealthy about it. They have way more than I do, but they just don't, they just don't show it. Me, I'm wearing my problem very loudly uh, and proudly. So that's the difference, okay? You guys, I'm an open book, clearly. <laughs> yeah, sorry, okay. So that's another testament I'm going to be working on and that'll be due towards the end of February. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be able to keep up with all my deadlines. I'm really pushing myself this year to only commit to things I can keep up with uh, because I don't like disappointing people and it makes me feel bad and I don't want to feel bad. It's been a rough, it's been a rough year already. Oh my God. I'll get to that at the end of the episode. Don't worry about that. But yeah. Okay. Um, another testament I have going is the Taka cardigan. Taka is, I think, a Finnish word. I'm not sure what it means. I should have looked that up, but it's by Sari Nordland and it's a cardigan. And I know some of you are like, what? You don't knit cardigans. And you're right. I only knit like one cardigan a year. That's my quota. And this is going to be my cardigan of the year. Okay. So it's another neutral cardigan. If you guys remember my Gabrielle cardigan that I showed you in my year round wrap up, um, it was the one done in Gregoria Fibers uh, Cotton Merino. And that was also a neutral tannish color. And I think it's because cardigans for me, I'm not super comfortable layering them. I'm not really fashion forward, honestly. Like I know I, know I look put together on these videos, but I just know how to throw on a sweater and throw on a bottom and that's it. I don't know how to layer and build a look. It's really just bare minimum <laughs> looking okay for me. So like cardigans, I feel like are very challenging because you have to layer the look. Obviously you're not just gonna wear, I mean, some, you could. I don't wanna shame anybody who does that. I don't want to wear a cardigan with nothing underneath. You know, it's, it's a little risky. It's a little risky. <laughs> so I will wear something underneath the cardigan, you know, for modern sensibilities of decency and modesty. Um, but it, I can't think about matching really loud colors. Um, so I think cardigans should be things that you like throw on and complete a look rather than build the look entirely because I'm not that fashion forward. <laughs> so this is the colorway that I chose. This colorway is called Morning Dove from the Red Pansy. And the Red Pansy, you remember, is my friend Kelly, who is coming with me to the Portland City Arm Crawl. And, um, this colorway is gorgeous. It's this like beautiful tan with sand notes and gray. I just, 
I pre-ordered this yarn from her special in bulky weight. So the pattern itself is written for iron weight, but I asked for bulky like a couple years ago and I've been holding on to it. And when I was selected for this test knit, which I was so excited about, I really struggled to find anything in my stash. And I also looked online to see what options I could do to purchase Aran weight. And Aran weight is difficult for people like me who like a soft hand in their yarn because Aran weight, because it's so chunky, it often tends to be um, more rustic. And rustic yarn is really difficult for me to use and be comfortable with just because of the texture. Um, and that's, like I said, it's a personal preference. It's okay if you like iron weight. It's okay if you like rustic. I, one of my best friends loves rustic yarn and um, it's really hard for us to do a fiber swap for that reason. But anyway, the point is I had this and I was really lucky. Um, I was hoping to get away with yarn chicken because I had a little over 600 yards and I was like, maybe I could get by. But when I gate swatched this, um, I needed to go up two needle sizes to reach the gauge that the pattern suggested. And I knew that was gonna eat up eat up yarn considerably. So whatever, whatever hope I had of like skirting by with the amount of yarn I had went up in smoke when I saw the gauge swatch. And uh, I know I've told you guys a lot that I don't gauge swatch at all. And I really, I really rarely ever do gauge swatch. I will gauge check once I've actually started the pattern and I'm in it. Um, and that's just the way I live my life. I know other people are gonna be like, gasp and I, I know I'm sorry but it, obviously it works for me this is a personal thing that I do but I've been knitting for a long time like 14 years and when you work with sim like the same base again and again even though it's dyed by different people it's generally the same base right because I buy indie yarn um, and they buy it you know they buy the yarn itself from a wholesaler and then they dye it themselves like I explained in my last episode so the base itself is going to be the same. So I know my gauge consistently, whether it's DK or worsted or fingering, because those are the weights I use most often. But when it's a gauge, when it's a, a yarn like bulky yarn, and I have never worked with bulky yarn, um, I think ever, maybe I made a hat or a cowl like seven years ago, eight years ago, but that's really it. I've never made a garment. And obviously with garments, it's important to gauge swatch. So because it was a weight of yarn that I was totally uncomfortable with and inexperienced with, I did choose to gauge swatch and I'm so glad I did because like I said, I had to go up two needle sizes, which is pretty substantial when you're going from a size 10, US 10 to a size 11. So I had to skip, I tried the 10.5, it still wasn't enough. So then I tried the 11 and it was perfect for me. So if you are an inexperienced knitter, if you are working or if you're experienced but still working with a yarn you're not used to, I do recommend gauge swatching um, because I did it and I'm glad I did because otherwise I would have put in a lot of work for this. Um, and sorry I went off on a tangent, but on the Taka, card Taka cardigan, I think that's how it's pronounced. Like I said, it's Finnish, I think, and I don't speak Finnish. Um, but incorporates this gorgeous slip stitch detail that goes all the way down to the sleeve and for the sleeve decreases as well. So it creates structure on the sleeve, but it also creates a visual point of interest. Um, and this is for the shoulder seam. So it's really gorgeous. Um, I'm so excited to have it done and finished so I can wear it. Cause right now when it's just like hanging one sleeve done, one sleeve un like not even started and the body still in progress, it's kind of hard for me to show you guys what it actually looks like because I am a small person and not coordinated. But it's gonna be lovely and I'm really happy with the yarn choice and I'm just glad I had it in stash. Kelly is dying up a couple more skeins for me because I do suspect that I will run out, like I said, because I had to go up in needle size and that uses up more yarn, but it will be worth it. Um, I'm still gonna finish on schedule. This moves so fast. Um, I am almost done with the body. I only have maybe two, three inches left to do and I have one sleeve and one sleeve took me a day, less than a day. So like in total, it's gonna be a four to five day project. Um, and that's pretty incredible <laughs> to spend only five days on a cardigan. So if you need a quick knit and you have some bulky yarn or if you have lighter weight yarns that you wanna combine into bulky, cause that is a trend I wanna talk about. Um, I do highly recommend this pattern once it comes out. And again, that's by Sari Nordland. Um, in another pattern, I am testing it for 
So like Tati, as soon as she announced one, she announced another and I was obsessed. So this is the marzipan that's coming out by Sari and I'm test knitting that as well. And I'm using this yarn. Um, my older viewers will recognize this yarn. This is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in the colorway um, Cafe Au Lait Dahlia. And it's this gorgeous cream with slight pink variegation, like soft pink. So it really, it reminds me of um, strawberries and champagne. That's what it reminds me of. And it's so gorgeous. And since the colorway, or since the pattern that Sari is coming out with, it's this gorgeous cabled yoke with ribbing that goes all the way down. And it's so stunning. So I wanted something like a yarn that was not too loud, not too variegated, but still slight um, to emphasize the cabling, obviously. So I was really lucky that I had this in my stash. And um, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. And I'm really excited to use this yarn because I love Sweet Sparrow yarns. And I just haven't had a chance to use it, it yet. Um, I'm, just, I'm just so thrilled, you guys. Um, and cabling, I know, is having a moment for me. I think... I think it's having a moment for everybody. A lot of designers I'm noticing are using cabling and I think it's just one of those things that happens to become a trend. And I'm really glad it is because cabling is one of the first ways I challenged myself to improve my knitting after I started. So, well, I learned when I was nine, but I picked it back up at 14 just to make my friend scarves. And I did a lot of garter stitch scarves and it was just easy. Um, garter stitch and stockinette, which looked awful, of course. Ribbing, stockinette, garter stitch, you know, whatever. And um, then I started cabling and I did cabling for a hot minute. Um, so it was kind of like one of my first um, forays into real knitting, you know, quote unquote real knitting. And um, so I have a special spot in my heart for it. And now that all these gorgeous cable designs are coming out, it's been a lot of fun for me to go back to that, you know, first love in knitting. Um, and I'm just really excited to use this colorway in combination with a beautiful pattern. Um, and it's called Marzipan. If you don't follow Sari Nordland, you absolutely should because her, she is gorgeous, like so beautiful. And she's such a talented designer. I have no idea how she does it. I have no idea how any designer does it, honestly. I've tried and I have ideas still, but I see these designs come out and I'm like, no one is ever, ever gonna want my pattern because like people design stuff like Sari and Rachel knits things and I'm like, no, I got nothing like that. I got nothing like that in my mind. Um, but anyway, it's called Marzipan. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Marzipan is a, it's a confectionery um, and it kind of looks like this color actually when it's um, not colored, like not colored with food dye. So I thought it would be a nice reference to both the name of the pattern as well as, you know, really emphasize the beauty of the cables itself. So that's why I picked this yarn and I'm super excited to show you guys more. Um, and that'll be due towards the end of February as well. Then my last test knit I want to show you guys is, I've talked about it before when I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to sign up for this test knit though, but I lied. I did sign up for the test. Well, I didn't lie. I said I wasn't sure. So that wasn't a, a declarative statement either way, but I did. I did sign up for the test knit. It's by Samantha Guerin, the designer. And it, it's that beautiful, dramatic, like autumnal yoke I told you guys about. And I showed you the yarn that I picked which was these, um, oh God, this cake is disgusting. Sorry, I should have shown you the pretty side. Look, that's much prettier. Um, and this is Cedar House Yarns, both of them. This is the colorway Wine Sap, which is this gorgeous orange red. Um, it almost glows, honestly. And this is Quail's Egg, and I adore this colorway. It's beautifully speckled, brown detailing. And I've just started the color work. Um, this is also due towards the end of February, and I know what you're thinking. Aro, February is the shortest month of the year. It seems like you're setting yourself up for failure here, but that's quitter talk and I don't want to hear it. <laughs> um, that's, it's the quitter talk that plays in the back of my mind as well, so if you did think that, you're not alone. Okay, half of me has already told, my, told the other half of me that, but the other half of me that's talking right now says that's quitter talk. And we can't do it with that attitude. So we're just gonna ignore that and we're gonna keep going. Okay? All right. Don't be in my don't be in my comments telling me I can't do it, because that'll just make me want to do it more. 
Um, and that's pretty much my whips. Um, the only yarn acquisition I made is for another testament. And I know what you guys are thinking, which is, God dang, she needs help. And I'm gonna say, you're not wrong. But I had a reason for this testament. I have a reason for every testament I do, but the reason specifically is yarn. So again, this is, <laughs> this is a Gregoria Fibrous testament and it uses her base cloud. And I love fuzzy yarns, which you guys have figured out. I love the fuzz. Um, and I've always wanted to use cloud, um, but the times that she partnered with other designers, she just didn't have enough stock of cloud. So I just never got to use it. And in her test knit, she offered, if you use the suggested yarn, which is her cloud base, then you can get a 20% discount. And I obviously jumped at the chance because not only does she have the yarn in stock, but she's offering 20% discount. And also I love her pattern. So we have a trifecta of reasons why I should do this. So you can see here, it was really, I had no choice in the matter. It was preordained and who am I to say no to fate, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, it's a gorgeous yarn. I love the feel of it. It's not, um, it's not fuzzy like mohair, but it's definitely soft and fluffy. Um, it's definitely better in my hand than um, Biche Bouche Le Gros mohair. And you'll think that it looks similar, but it actually, like if you look closely at the way the fiber is twisted, it's completely different. Um, and this is 42% baby alpaca, 28% extra fine wool, and 30% cotton. Um, I'm really excited to use it. I will tell you guys more about how it knits up but for now, the touch in my hand, it feels great. I'm really happy and excited to use this yarn and especially to test it for Gregoria Fibers once more because I really do I love her yarns, love her designs. I just think it's so stunning. And I really admire people who can like stick to an aesthetic because you guys know for my grid, I don't have an aesthetic. It's just whatever I feel like. And she really commits to her aesthetic. And I really do admire that. Um, yeah, so that's the stuff I have. And like I said, I haven't bought any yarn recently other than that for the test knit. And it was on a discount um, because I'm preparing for Portland City Yarn Crawl. And that'll be towards the end of February. We're going with a bunch of my friends. We're all going to meet up. And I'm just very excited. Um, oh, in reference to this, the discounted yarn for the test knits, I did have somebody in my DMs ask me how I can make a living from my test knit, from test knitting. And I just like, my mind reeled at that question because first, I only know of two designers that compensate test knitters and the compensation, like non-pattern compensation. There are some designers who will say, if you finish the test knit and provide feedback on time, then you get another pattern in addition to the one you already tested. And I know one designer that will buy a pattern from any designer. Most designers that offer that, that offer the extra pattern compensation, will just be one of theirs. And that's totally fine. I understand why they do that. The only designer that I've heard of actually compensating test knitters, it's like a $10 gift card. Like a PayPal credit gift card, which is $10 per design. I understand why I don't, I am not saying designers need to compensate their test knitters. I am not saying that designers should be able to provide a living to test knitters. I think that's ridiculous because you, if you think about it, a pattern should be graded at least to nine sizes to be inclusive, right? If you think, even if you have a test knitter for each size, just nine, if you even compensated them $100 per tester, if you have nine testers, you're asking the designer to invest $900 just to the testing phase alone. Most designers will pick two to three testers per size. So then the idea is, okay, are you going to compensate? Like, are you going to ask a designer to invest almost $2,000? Like, it just, it doesn't make sense. And I'm not saying that designers should be expected to somehow make a living for test knitters. It, it just makes no sense. I do this for fun. That's how I approach it. I do it for fun and to contribute to the community and to build excitement about patterns. Um, I'm not trying to make a living off of test knitting. Um, 
at least not from the design. It just makes no sense. I don't expect designers to put in thousands just to release a pattern. I just want to say that the only type of compensation I've ever gotten for a test net is like maybe gift cards, maybe extra patterns and sometimes 20% discount on yarn. So I just want to make that very clear because um, I don't think I referenced that in my episode five where I talk about test netting. Um, but it was just a, such an odd question to me that I felt like it should be addressed. Sorry, that got weird. Um, I didn't really want to mention, um, quickly because I know I've gotten a lot of DMs about it. The new Pom Pom magazine issue. I did not guest edit that. Everybody assumes that I had a hand to play and I did not. Okay. So for those of you who haven't seen it, I'm going to put, put the link to the Pom Pom magazine website and this issue that I'm talking about. They have released the pattern previews of the newest Pom Pom Mag issue. And the theme was like ethereal dreamscape. And a lot of it looks like my aesthetic. It's a lot of mohair. It's a lot of pastels. It's very dreamy and soft and slightly speckled. It's me. It's my interest. It's my aesthetic on a magazine. But I had no hand to play. I didn't guest edit it. I've seen them and I love them and I'm planning on knitting like every single one of those, but I didn't have a role. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Um, I really wish I had though. It's gorgeous. Did you guys know that when I lived in Austin, so Pom Pom Magazine, it, it, it has two offices, one in uh, London and one in Austin, Texas. And when I lived in Austin, I actually interviewed for their social media job and I almost got it. I really did. Um, but I don't take offense to them not picking me. It's okay. Like, I still love their magazine. It's great. Um, but I just thought that was a fun connection. I wish I, I wish I had a role in that issue because it's so me. Oh, um, but yeah, I think when that comes out and when I get the book, I did pre-order it by the way, when I get the physical magazine, I will have a special issue where I show you guys, you know, the page of the picture of the pattern. Cause I'm obviously not going to show you guys the whole pattern. Um, I'll show you the picture of the pattern and tell you what yarn I'm going to use for my stash, obviously. Um, so I think that'll be a fun Pom Pom Magazine issue episode. Um, but yeah, I think that's really it that I needed to talk about today. And thank you guys for respecting my boundaries again. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon for the perks, especially once I add the personal shopping option, um, please do so. Even if you can't support me on Patreon, that's totally cool. The fact that you are spending time with me right now is awesome. And um, please don't feel shy about like just saying hi and responding to my stories. Like I do them for a reason, you know? I'm just, as always, so grateful that you guys are part of my knitting community. And I can't wait to, you guys show, to show you guys more as I'm finishing. Um, I feel like I'm really hitting my stride in knitting. Oh wait, I had personal stuff to tell you. I'm not gonna tell you that now. I'll tell you that in another episode. We'll just not talk about it. It's fine, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna say goodbye because I already started saying goodbye. So have fun with your week. I might see you next week. I might see you the week after. I haven't decided. It's really just a spur of the moment thing. But thank you for seeing me right now. And I will talk to you guys soon. Love you, bye.